true and interesting theological conversation with my grandchildren. Three of them were sleeping over at my house on a Friday night, and Saturday their parents set up a photo opt at the kids' preschool with Santa Claus. So, Saturday morning, I look at George, Liam, and Josephine, ages three, five, and seven, and I said, who's ready to go meet Santa? Three-year-old George looks at me and says, Pops, Santa died. Five-year-old Liam picks up that thought, and he says, yeah, Pops, Santa Claus is already dead. Seven-year-old Josephine explained, Our dad told us that St. Nicholas was a real person who was a bishop and lived a long, long time ago and gave gifts to children and then he died. And the guy we're going to see at our school is just a man wearing a red suit impersonating Santa Claus. Um, I don't know if you have those kind of conversations at your house, but since my son is a historian, that's the kind of stuff his children know. Now, there's a lot of uh, contradictions and uh, controversies and speculation about Santa Claus in culture versus the real St. Nicholas in history. Unfortunately, uh, the same is true about Jesus in culture and the real Jesus of history, who is the same Jesus of Scripture. As we believe, and as we know in history, Jesus was born of a virgin, and He was born with a mission. He lived a sinless life, and He lived on mission. He died a sacrificial death on the cross for us. He died to fulfill His mission. On the third day, He was raised from the dead, and He turned and gave the mission, the, the calling, the commission, to His followers. Jesus is alive today, and He still has a mission. In Luke chapter 2, when the angel pronounces the birth of Christ, He also includes the mission that Jesus was born for, the purpose. He includes the mission that Jesus lived for and died for, and the mission that He gave to us. Today, I want to talk about the Christmas mission. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. And in the same region, there were shepherds out on the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those who with whom he is pleased. Verse 8 tells us that the shepherds were out in the fields. Now who were the shepherds? If we go back in that day, we'll see that the shepherds were not the theological, educational, social, or financial elite. Far from that. They were actually the opposite of that. Verse 9 tells us that this angel took the message of the gospel, the message of the coming of the Messiah, the message of the birth of Christ, not to the theological and financial and social and economic and every other kind of elite and privileged person there might be. That message was given to the shepherds. The, the opposite of the kind of people that we would think would be the best ones to deliver this message. And what was the message? We see in verse 10, very clear and very powerful message. The angel said to them, fear not, because I'm bringing you good news of great joy. This message of good news and great joy was given to people who had very little good news and very rarely encountered great joy. If they looked at their life around them and they looked at the situation these Jewish shepherds were under the hill of the Roman Empire, at the bottom of the social ladder, in every way imaginable, 
Good news and great joy was not what would describe their lives. But here's the mission of Jesus. Here's the message bringing good news, great joy, but not just to these shepherds, for all the people. Not for all the Jews only. Not for the academic elite only. Not for those who have privileged and prestigious places in society. This message of good news and great joy is for all people. Every part of the social structure, a message for all people. Then in verse 11, and what is this message of good news and great joy that's supposed to be for all people? What is it? Verse 11 tells us that born to you on this day. I'm going to stop right there. This day. This day would make it seem like something cataclysmic, something transformational, something big is happening right now. This day. Born to you this day. And then he describes this as the Savior, Christ, and Lord. Every one of those words were packed with theological and cultural and historic meaning for most Jews of that day. Savior, Christ, Lord. But then the curveball comes in verse 12. While they're thinking, this day, this is what we've waited for generation after generation after generation after generation from, from the all the Old Testament heroes. We have waited and now this day, these shepherds. And then verse 12 he says, and this will be the sign. You'll find basically a baby in a barn. In a manger. A manger is something that horses and barn animals and farm animals eat out of. You put their food in there. A, a baby in a barn. I don't know if you've been in a barn lately or ever. I grew up with horses. I grew up riding horses. I grew up feeding our horses in the barn. And listen, barns are nasty places. Barns stink. Barns, uh, there are flies everywhere. They're not clean. It's not really a happy thought for me right now today. Uh, maybe when I was a kid, it didn't matter when I enjoyed riding horses. But barns are not the places that you think of babies being born. And so here comes Savior, Christ, Lord, these glorious concepts in Jewish history and culture. And then they have this expectation, but what they get is a baby and a barn. It makes absolutely no sense that it would come out like that. But then 13, suddenly, not just a baby in a barn, there's now this chorus of angels, and we're not even sure what they are, but heavenly beings, heavenly hosts in this worship concert to God. So it goes from this majestic idea, Savior, Messiah, Lord, to baby in a stinking barn, to this glorious moment. And God gives His message and God calls people, and God shows up in places that we least expect. God trusts the message into the hands of maybe those that we wouldn't naturally say, hey, this is the person who's going to be the great messenger for God. I think about that Christmas movie classic, It's a Wonderful Life, and in a pivotal scene in that movie, uh, Clarence the unlikely angel jumps off a bridge in a seemingly suicide moment into the icy river. And then the, the, the star of the show, George Bailey, jumps in and saves his life. And they're sitting there having some coffee later on and talking about this. It's when finally Clarence acknowledges that he is George Bailey's guardian angel. And Clarence is sort of a bumbling, uh, not real glorious looking angel. And George makes this comment. He kind of sarcastically says, huh, you look about like the kind of angel I would get, more like a fallen angel. And Clarence kind of takes it in stride and talks about that he's sort of in angel school, sort of trying to grow his wings. Now, don't worry about the theology of It's a Wonderful Life. It's, it's not biblical theology, but it's a good movie. But you look about like the kind of angel I would get. And I think sometimes I think maybe these shepherds were thinking that. The angel announced to the shepherds, this day, your Savior your Lord, your Christ is here. It was 30 years before the Savior, the Lord, the Christ, did His first miracle. That was turning water into wine at a wedding. It wasn't a, a necessary miracle. It wasn't one that saved a life or healed a body, but it was a miracle. And it started this chain of miracles 
What we see is Jesus on mission right here. And the mission is becoming obvious to everyone. But we go back to this beginning message from the angel. The good news, the great joy, is for all people. The mission that started on earth here in this story we're reading, this baby born in a manger, in a barn, the mission was for all people. As you celebrate Christmas this year with friends and family, remember, the message from the very beginning was good news of great joy, but also remember the mission is for all people. Jesus died for all people. He calls us to reach all people. We say it like this, to reach every nation in our generation. May the good news and the great joy not only fill your home, but spread from your home to your neighborhood, to your cities and campuses and to the nations.